Frozen Horror just got a brand new solo quest, and the Yetis got a nerf as well. On July 7th, Zargon finally gave us an update about Frozen Horror, and this says, Your Dread Ruler returns, and from the frozen depths I bring unto you a new trial which introduces the next phase of my diabolical plans. And that links to a blog post on Hasbro Pulse. Hero Quest, A Chilling Journey North. Exciting news ahead gamers. The Frozen Horror Expansion global launch date is August 1st, 2022, though it may be available in your region ahead of schedule. That's referring to the Amazon stuff that we saw already. We're so excited for this release that we've put together an introductory solo quest for any hero to attempt, along with additional playtest rules and errata. Here's a deeper look from our favorite designer, Doug. Hear my words, heroes, for the Hero Quest Frozen Horror expansion pack is not an adventure to be trifled with. Many a valiant hero has not returned from its icy monster-strewn dungeons. Lordhome has revealed a dangerous journey one hero may undertake to find a lost artifact of great power. Are you up to the task? The quest is calling. Hero Quest Online Quest 2 Into the Northlands is a solo quest for any hero. That's interesting because in the Frozen Horror quest pack it specifically asks for the Barbarian to be the hero. It is designed to prepare them for the powerful threats found in the Frozen Horror expansion pack. For Zargon players, this quest gives some suggestions and tools to help scale the difficulty level of the desired game. It also answers some commonly asked questions and provides errata to some game mechanics that felt more unfair than challenging. That's referring to the infamous Yeti Hug. This quest includes a set of playtest rules for bringing an animal companion on your solo adventures. A popular archetype in sword and sorcery tales is the friend of beasts. Great cats, horses, hawks, and all manner of small clever critters have a history of thwarting the machinations of foul sorcerers. I know what this is a reference to, it's Beastmaster, I actually watched that a couple weeks ago and it was a very good movie. I wonder if this will be hinting at the next hero they're releasing after the rogue heir of Elethorn. We wanted to take this opportunity to playtest some new companion rules and tell a story of how your hero first encountered one of these faithful animals on their journey to the frozen north. The Avalon Hill team uses an alternative to the roll to move mechanic in our playtesting. We included it in this quest so you could try it out. It keeps the drama of rolling double ones, tripping on a loose dungeon cobblestone in combat, but keeps exploring brisk. This is great. This is also a reference to Bardic Broadcast's video. Will I trip on a flagstone or leap heroically into battle? Let's find out. Well, the best thing about Hero Quest is ignoring the roll to move rule. Cast the Far Voice spell and let us know what you think. There's a download link and it leads to this. The Frozen Horror Prelude, a solo quest for any hero. Heed well my words, for your journey north has been fraught with peril and has sense an arduous ordeal in the future. The pages of the lore tome tell of a frozen labyrinth of ice ahead. The maze protects an artifact of power that promises to be a welcome treasure if you possess the courage to wrest it from Zargon's foul minions within. A dangerous task indeed, but take heart because you are not alone. Snowdasher, the wolf who has been sharing your food and warmth on these icy days, feels a kinship to you. I sense a keen intellect in the beast, and I believe she will fight by your side in the trial to come as her path mirrors your own. The most interesting thing that stands out to me besides the wolf is the hero token. We finally have a use for it besides just being a turn counter, and that's what represents Snowdasher the wolf. And for the people who own one of the other expansions, they can use those wolf miniatures instead. The next thing is the wandering monster in the quest is Ice Gremlin. Each tunnel of a certain kind only leads to the tunnel of the other type. So for instance, this crack here leads to that crack, that one leads to that one. Hey, an ice gremlin is here picking the scraps of a long dead explorer. Searching this room reveals a backpack visible on the ground under the tattered remains. Inside the backpack, the hero finds a usable toolkit, as well as two potions of healing. Each potion restores up to four lost body points when consumed. B. A large white wolf here raises its head to the sky and opens its maw, but no sound escapes it. Its body is more bone than fur, and it glares at you from hollow eye sockets lit by a dull purple glow. If Snowdasher is with the hero, she howls with mourning and rage. That one's more of an atmosphere rather than anything. C. An old polar warbear is trapped in this cage. A lever in the wall here looks as if it would release the beast if it were pulled. The cage is impassable and blocks the line of sight until a lever on the wall is pulled. No action? From the square marked C. The warbear will leave if the hero allows it to pass unharmed. If the hero searches for treasure in this room, they find a longsword. It's sort of weird that the ice gremlins would cage up one of their allies, but maybe this polar warbear went rogue. D. If the hero searches for treasure in this room, a set of bracers with the wolf embossment is found in the tomb as well as a potion of healing that restores up to four body points when consumed. Found right at the top here by the skeletons. This room is littered with junk. Ice gremlins steal anything they can get their cold hands on. Their booty is all stored in this room. A hero will reclaim any item previously stolen from them in this quest when they enter this room. 
If the hero searches for treasure in this room, they will find a well-kept polished shell helmet, a potion of healing, another one, and 50 gold coins. Oh yeah, that definitely looks like a junk room and it uses one of the tiles that you have to overlay. An intense cold emanates from the door here. Oh, F is here to give you warning that there's a boss in this room. Coincidentally, where Vareg is in the first quest. G. A massive gremlin sits on a frozen throne. It lifts a battle axe made entirely of ice over its head and signals the yeti to attack. Mr. Rhymebreath knows the dread spell Tempest, and I think his first name is either Raxfot or Jaxfot. He has 8 movement, 3 attack dice, 3 defend dice, 4 body points, and 4 mind points. Searching the room, the hero can find 200 gold coins, as well as the long lost artifact called the Armband of Ice. Its use is explained on the matching artifact card in the Frozen Horror Expansion Pack. When he's defeated, the cold magic that created the throne is dispelled. It melts into water, revealing an exit for the entrance of the cage where this quest first began. Replace the throne with an open door. Oh, that's a very cool mechanic. Conclusion: As this quest ends, if Snowdasher remains with the hero, she gives them a nod of gratitude before bounding off to another adventure. They bring you in a wolf to balance out this quest, but then they make it leave. And attached to this is some things that will improve your experience, aka errata. Firstly, there's a Yeti hug attack addressed. Yetis are particularly feared for their dreaded hug attack, which incapacitates a hero as the Yeti squeezes them to death. In solo quests, we recommend Zargon be content pulverizing their foes with meaty Yeti fists and leave the brutal Yeti hugs to group quests. And we finally know what to do with the Frozen Horror even though his base is twice the size as before. We made our Frozen Horror fit a 2x2 square space to give you a proper threat for your dungeon. Zargon should inform the heroes that the Frozen Horror can squeeze down those small quarters if they think they can use its mythic proportions to their advantage. I could definitely see that being scary if you have this giant monster chasing you down the hall, but it might also mean that your board becomes a jumble as you're trying to fit this 2 inch figure inside a 1 inch hallway on the board. Monsters with multiple attacks, Polar Warbear. A hero attacked by a monster with multiple attacks gets only one defend roll against that monster per turn, no matter how many of that monster's attacks are directed at the hero. The hero can wait to see the result of the first attack directed at them before deciding if they wish to roll defense against that attack or save the defense roll for a potential second attack. So that'd be like if it was 1 damage on the first roll, you just decide to take that damage and try and fight the second attack worth of damage. Mind points. As long as the hero has 0 mind points, they are in shock. If the hero later regains mind points, they are no longer in shock. Ice tunnel. If a hero or monster lands on an ice tunnel space that is occupied, move the occupying character to an adjacent space of their choice. Well, you just kind of shove everyone out of the way whether they're friend or foe. Unthreatened movement. If no monsters are active on the game board, you may decide to move in an unhurried way. Instead of rolling, you may treat each red die you would have rolled to move as if you had rolled a 4. So that's a variant of free movement, and that type of thing has been a house rule for a long time. Animal allies. This is where we get to the wolf. Animal allies are faithful companions who can be recruited at no cost to accompany a hero on a solo quest, before the quest begins. A hero may also recruit an animal ally to join them on a group quest if there are fewer than 4 hero characters. Oh that's interesting. I thought you always needed 4 characters for hero quests, even if somebody's controlling 2 of them. An animal ally is a new type of hero character who is controlled by the player who recruited them. The ally moves and attacks immediately after the turn of that player's hero. A hero can control only one animal ally at a time. An animal can move, attack, and defend as any hero can, but they can take no other actions such as opening doors. Makes sense because they don't really have hands. The ally does not receive any treasure. They cannot use or carry equipment, artifacts, or other items unless explicitly stated that those items are intended for them. As an action, any hero can administer one of their potions to an animal ally in an adjacent square as long as neither character is adjacent to a monster. Oh that's good, so you can keep your dog alive. If a hero dies on a quest, any animal ally recruited by that hero continues the quest, controlled by the fallen hero's player, until all non-ally heroes are defeated. It sounds to me like this wolf companion was added if people are being frustrated with the solo quests and dying too often, but with the change to yeti hugs that might not happen quite as much. Here's the wolf's stats. 10 movement, 3 attack which includes attacking diagonally, 2 defend dice, 5 body points, and 1 mind point. But there's still more to this online quest. Rotating the page, we are greeted by excess cards. Raiment of the Frozen Champion. Centuries ago, a hero possessing four powerful artifacts found the fortitude to banish the ancient evil known as the Frozen Horror to an icy tomb. Now, these instruments of power have found their way into Zargon's sorceress clutches. Zargon, hide these artifacts with your most deadly minions inside the Frozen Horror quest pack, lest they once again fall into the hands of those who wish to usurp your power. So there's two pages here, one is the front of the cards, the other is the back. Ice Queen's Spear. Weapon. This bejeweled spear allows you to attack diagonally with the attack strength of two combat dice, 
or three if attacking a polar warbear, may not be used by the wizard. Cold Iron Plate Mail. Armor. This magical metal armor gives you two extra defend dice and ice gremlins will not steal from you. However, because it's so heavy, you may only roll one red die for movement while wearing it. May be combined with a helmet and or shield. May not be worn by the wizard. Warhorn of Command. A symbol of leadership from a forgotten time. It still holds influence among those who call themselves warriors. If a mercenary controlled by a hero who carries this enchanted warhorn survives a quest, they will rejoin that hero in exchange for gold coins equal to half of their normal fee. I could see that artifact actually being quite useful for people. Spiked Shield. Armor. This shield gives you one extra defend die. A yeti will not grab and hug a hero wielding this bladed artifact. May not be used with the battle axe or the staff. May not be used by the wizard. Oh, that's also very cool. And at least for me, it creates vivid imagery of a yeti trying to suffocate a hero and then pushing back with the spiked shield and the yeti recoiling in pain. And on the last page here, we have a nice color illustration of that wolf, the artifact cards, and the playtest rules of the wolf that we saw up above. And I'm really happy to see that they keep adding these new quests to the expansions that were out for a long time, because it even adds something new for the players who've been playing these for many years, and gives them different variant rules and things like that they can try out if they were getting tired of their own home rules. All in all, I think this is a very good thing for the future of the game, and it was nice to see something new from Zargon, especially with people getting Frozen Horror from Amazon already. I'll have more HeroQuest content coming in the future. Thanks for watching, goodbye.